Hi Founders fans, Jason here. Today we're going to answer the age-old question, who was the pen man of the revolution? Uh, pen man. Pen... Penman? Penman? Uh, who, was, who was the most notable author of the revolution? Now, there are several candidates to fit this description, um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name two of them right off the bat that don't fit the bill. Uh, one of them is Gouverneur Morris, who, was the, who drafted the final version of the Constitution. Uh, he wrote, We the People, uh, and the whole preamble, and we're all familiar with his work, but it was really his only really writing achievement, so that doesn't really put him, doesn't qualify him to be the pen man. Um, another one is Thomas Jefferson, who wrote the Declaration, which is my personal favorite uh, writing from that time period, and many Americans' favorite, and it's the birth certificate for the United States. Um, but that is not, you know, Jefferson wrote a few very influential things, and, and, and his correspondence is still very valuable today, but most of the founders had a lengthy correspondence that we still were fortunate to still have around. So that doesn't really qualify him as the guy. Um, now, the person most people think of uh, when they think of the penman of the revolution is Thomas Paine. Now, Thomas Paine wrote Common Sense, which came out, you know, the war had already started, uh, we were about to evacuate Britain from Boston, um, we're still early in the war, but in independence was being spoken of, and Common Sense was published wildly popular. It sold about 300,000 copies, which doesn't sound like a lot today, but there were only like 2 million people around, so it's, it's like selling, you know, uh... 80 million copies today, <laughs> like it was wildly successful. You know, I, I want to say considering not everyone can read, but actually in America, liter literacy rates were very high at the time, which probably helped its sales. Um, he also wrote The Crisis, which was a series of articles that came out during the, the war. Uh, famously, uh, these are the times that try men's souls. Uh, and and those were usually important documents. Uh, later in life, he would go over to Europe, and while he was in France, he would start a second revolution over there. He would help them write their constitution. Um, <clears throat> he would write Rights of Man, which is a was a hugely influential book. Um, but, unfortunately, he really only has two main documents for the American Revolution, Common Sense and the Crisis. Again, the Crisis was a series of articles, but when we read it back today, uh, we read it as one thing, um, and people will argue with me when I say I don't believe he was the penman of the revolution. And actually, I wrote about Thomas Paine on my website, Founder of the Day, very early on, about a year and a half ago, and I actually titled that article Thomas Paine, Penman of the Revolution, uh, which is, I noticed that today, and that's why I wanted to have this conversation, because I now disagree with what I once thought. In my opinion, someone I've referenced several times on this channel is the penman of the revolution, and that is John Dickinson. So Dickinson, uh, Dickinson attended as a younger man the Stamp Act Congress, where uh, the result of which was three petitions: one sent to the king, one to, um, and two to Parliament, one to the House of Lords, and one to the House of uh, Commons. Um, it escapes me right now which one he wrote, but he wrote one of those three documents. For, and those petitions ended up being successful. I mean, they had help from merchants in Britain who were upset at the loss of funds they were receiving and, and such, but that was extremely important. But then Britain kept passing these acts that were really getting on people's nerves, and he wrote uh, letters from a Pennsylvania farmer. Now, uh, the Pennsylvania farmer, uh, everyone kind of knew it was him, but this was a series of articles that outlined in the in the late 1760s the grievances of the colonists and the arguments that would uh, end up starting the revolution were all consolidated very nicely into these letters and that got his name out there as a writer um, you know he then of course attends a few other the first continental congress and uh, at the second continental congress he's the one who pushes for the olive branch petition that one last please your Majesty help us out. 
uh, and he wrote that. Uh, and then he goes on to uh, write um, when Thomas Jefferson and John Adams go to, and Ben Franklin, they all go to write, and Robert Livingston and Roger Sherman, those five men were on the committee to write the Declaration of Independence. Uh, he goes and writes the Articles of Confederation, which was the first government that lasted officially seven years. Seven years, 1781, Maryland finally signed. Uh, until, I mean, technically until Washington took over, so 1789, so eight years. Not the longest time, but it was the first government of the United States. Um, you know, and then he goes on to, he attends the Constitutional Convention. He doesn't, you know, like I said earlier, Governor Morris wrote the final draft. Uh, he does participate in the creation of that document, though he doesn't write it. But, in summary, when it comes down to when it comes down to brass tacks, John Dickinson wrote a lot more things. Thomas Paine, yes, common sense might have been more important, um, but the totality of what John Dickinson wrote is, from my my perspective, just puts gives him that little edge. Um, now, feel free to disagree with me. If you disagree with me, please leave a comment. Tell me why I'm a dummy. <laughs> um, if you agree with me, let me know. If there's someone I forgot to mention that you uh, that wrote several things, uh, even if you don't think they're the penman, because it's this is a fun exercise. There's no really the guy, um, but if there is someone I left out, please feel free to interject here. I mean, James Madison wrote the Federalist Papers with Alexander Hamilton, and the United States Constitution with Alexander Hamilton and several other people. So there are a lot of candidates, and I would love to know who you think the best author of the revolution was. So thank you very much. My name is Jason, and I will see you tomorrow.